So let's talk uh, about the deep learning, and I will use uh, Python for that. And I will talk about segmentation and classification of images for that. Um, about me, my name is Fabio Leandro, and my nickname is Fabio Sami. Uh, I am from a tiny city called Paulo Franchin. Uh, I use in Linux and spreading the word size 2002. I'm a web dev and developer with Ruby on Rails. I'm CTO at Ponchester Company. It's a local company. Um, I'm master, a master degree student at UTFPR in Medianeira and professor in graduate and postgraduate at Guairacá and Guarapuava. And all this seed is from Paraná State. Uh, before I talk uh, about the deep learning, I will talk about my master's degree research, is why I'm studying deep learning. So, um, I'm using uh, multispectral cameras, it's not uh, RGB cameras, it's multispectral, they catch uh, another waves of the, the light, the light uh, with the Phantom 4, the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. I go to the farms and capture a bunch of images and make a soil analysis. It's, uh, it's the chemical of the soil and grab together to, to classify uh, manually and and put in my uh, convolutional uh, network. Uh, to take a thermal map like that, uh, I hope I will take this, these maps. Um, so what is deep learning? Um, go back uh, uh, to math with the statistics. And when, uh, when I need to learn something about uh, we not have the data, like uh, mm, how how you can measure the age of the trees uh, first of all you need to to learn and um, how a how old is uh first a uh, first tree second tree i need to learn uh, um the leaves of the co uh, the color of the leaves, how much leaves the tree are, uh, has, um, a bunch of data to to put in the prob probability curve um, with normal distribution, uh, like in the A X, we have the probability of the your attributes and the distributor of your data in x x axis so basically if the the attributes is out of this curve and your variables is not dependence between of them so you can discard of them and take another um, another attributes to learning the curve uh, to to bring uh, this linear relationship uh, after you put your attributes, learn about them, and you can see the distribution of your data and make a linear conclusion or not between of them. And if you have a linear uh, distribution, you can make a singular formula uh, to to predict your your data. Uh, if you have a curve, you can, but it's more difficult for for this. So for the 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 age of the trees, uh, this uh, this uh, experiment, and they read the, the age of the tree and the height of them. So each point make it a one tree and we can see a linear straight line uh, for this uh, after after see this this graph you can make um, a formula to predict the 
the i axis or is our age uh, by this formula. Um, this is statistics. This is what you you can use and how you can use. And but you need to do this manually. You can go to your data, see what your data uh, talk. Uh, see where the points are, see a bunch of them. And, and you can do this automatically with uh, machine learning. But uh, for machine learning, and you have uh, three, three options for clustering your da a data and see what's happened with regression, uh, regression, classification, or clustering. For, for machine learning, uh, you have a problem because uh, you need to engineer the features. Uh, you need select of uh, the features you, you, you are read. Uh, you can put all of your data because the, the algorithm is too slow for them. You basically, for learning how, how old is a tree, you can't you can uh, spend a bunch of days only for 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 learn this so the deep learning is for is for less uh, for you spend less time and you you don't spend a feature engineer and days a bunch of days for select your features um, just uh, you can just put all your data and the underhood of the the your model of of your network uh, bring your output and try to uh, predict what you can what you what you need to see what you can see um in machine learning, you have uh, a one layer, just uh, your input, your formula of your neuron, and the output. But in deep learning, you can uh, learn a bunch of features uh, using neighborhood. Like for images, you need to normalize your image. Uh, you can put an uh, image like uh, one, one per three or two per five and after uh, you need to normalize so you can crop you can squash you can uh, use some algorithm for normalize your data or your phrases or your speech or um, a lot of uh, uh, data you can put on the on this so you have uh, in this case is a Lex model, and and uh, they this model have uh, seven layers for learn. Uh, in my research, we can uh, I I not discover yet what uh, each layer uh, does, but uh, is uh, simple maths or max pooling average um otherwise i will talk about uh, these layers um uh, after so case of uses deep learning where where you can use deep learning and uh, computer vision uh, for the automated cars uh how how can identify the the persons the car the street the lines of the street uh, the signal uh, traffic, um, bicycles, anything you can use deep learning. Um, speech and natural, natural language processing. If you have a, a sentence, wor a sentence phrase uh, to translate in another language like uh, ours and in Portuguese. Uh, I ask like uh, vocês estão me ouvindo 
or in uh, so in the English you need to can you hear me you need to put the verb in first and and after you ask um, so in uh, you can put this data to the deep learning learn your data and translate the the face uh, you can do with speech recognizing grammar converter or natural language parser or recommender system uh, like uh, tv channels tv programs tourism education commercial and youtube videos seeing people music uh, advertising it's a lot using for the companies for this and a lot of more things but this is more explorate so these uh, examples applications and they they exist so first you can classify the objects sorry you can use in a simple classification like in this in this demo uh, I put uh, a cartoon a cartoon image they are the same size and I don't remember the size of them but they are normalized and in the first of all uh, in the cartoon this uh, image uh, they return to me the comic book or uh, is a magazine or is a press for the cat uh, the classification returned to me uh, they may be our cat they may be our failing they may be a domestic cat they are tabby or domestic animal just for the image I'm not trained this this uh, this data I just put on that and and the the application returned to me uh, you can use it for colorization uh, this is a black and white uh, image and I don't know if you can see but uh, the, the image is correlated by the, the network you can localization images uh, where is the cat on the, the image in this case is five cats you can just use for this and pixel level classification segmentation you have uh, image with with a uh, lot information and you need segmentation the this image for what you uh, what is more important for you uh, using pixel level seg segmentation uh, this case is the ground truth and the another three cases ex experiments using convolutional networks uh, you can use it for sequence learning uh, you have a video and you just uh, use the the frames per second and put in your in your in your network convolutional or deep learning or whatever um, and learning what the the, the video does uh, if he is uh, uh, young people playing game of soccer or playing uh, guitar or uh, fighting or whatever you can use it for learning sequence in machine learning is uh, almost impossible to do that and the, the biggest thing is you can transfer learning you can get a model of the community and bring it to your case in in this example you can bring the the model from ImageNet and put it uh, this is uh, just training and you can transfer the weights of the, the your network to your new data uh, for your case dog vers, uh, versus cat so um, when you work with deep learning uh, you you are most of the cases you you use a, a framework for these tasks and my case I'm using CAF 
Uh, so I just uh, using the model zoo, uh, using this this script. The GIST uh, has a documentation of the the IDs. You can download the the model and use them for your net, uh, for your case. Uh, or you can download the, the official CAF models. I will talk uh, uh, after about that. And for the deep learning uh, upgrades, you can uh, you uh, we have a recognition contests. The simple of them, if your network uh, uh, has working, uh, you need to use the MINIST. The MINIST is the simplest uh, contest for your network. If your network don't rec recognize them, don't have uh, like 90% of accuracy, accuracy uh, your network is it's a crap. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so you can download the MINIST dataset, and it's a rendered digit recognition. It's a simple contest. If your network pass this, you can put in the your real world. The ImageNet contest is a little difficult for this. Um, almost of cases, you use a good model uh, in this this contest. Contest, excuse me. Um, and you can download your model and put it in, in your cases. Uh, for the contest, uh, they they start the the ImageNet contest start in 2010, and 2010 and 2011 they use uh, machine learning, so they they have 25% uh, of errors. So 25% uh, of our data can uh, can classification for what you you put in the network like example um, the tiger or uh, the tape player or landscape uh, in this case the the network return uh, reflex camera um, the abacus is uh, is this example so in 2010 in 2011 uh, they have uh, more than 25% of errors. Uh, the first of all of deep learning using it in this context, a context, is AlexNet in 2012 with uh, eight layers and 16% of errors. And 2013, they using a ZF uh, model, ZF network, uh, with uh, eight layers. Uh, VGG network in 2014 with 19 layers and 22 layers with Google Net and 6.7% of errors and the most recent contest cons contest um, result is with uh, has and 1052 layers it's a bunch of layers uh, in our world uh, we we don't use because uh, you need to buy the expensive cards from NVIDIA to run this, this model. Uh, in, in the, the contest, the contest is not from only a just bunch of imagery they can uh, bring any, any powerful uh, things. And the, I don't remember this this university, but but uh, they created a diabetic retin retinopath contest, and basically uh, of images of your eyes uh, of your retina, and to to predict if your retina maybe uh, maybe you have um, a diabetic. You are diabetic with uh, just images. Uh, this contest provides 17,000 images with classification from zero uh, 
is this health, and two four is this uh, disease image of your of your retina. And the winner is Benjamin Graham uh, using Space Convent Net is uh, another network. But uh, after the output of network, they, uh, he uh, used the random forest technique for them. And he has uh, 80, 80, 18, 30, 83 percent of uh, accuracy um, for the for the doctors, they uh, for one doctor to to another doctor, uh, no, no ever uh, they they has the same conclude. So in this case is is a great benefit for for these cases. So let's talk let's talk about deep deep learning. Uh, I I read this. Uh, talk about the this network. So uh, the network in this example is the AlexNet uh, using convolutional uh, networks. But you don't have only convolutional. You have a randomly initialized uh, Bayesian, hidden trajectory, monophone, trifone, convolutional. It's much used. It's better results in most of cases. Ansible bidirectional is a lot of uh, networks you can use. And for uh, convolutional models, you can use uh, don't uh, know only the AlexNet. You can use Linet, it uh, has five layers, is only for MINIST uh, in the real world. Uh, you can use uh, AlexNet with uh, eight layers, ZFNet with eight layers, VGGNet with uh, 90 layers. So uh, has uh, has many layers you you have. Uh, more uh, more hardware you need to to process your data. And the layers is this is this five is more important. You have the convolutional is 2D, activation is ReLU, tag or sigmoid, is just uh, math uh, procedures. Element wise, some product or max of two layers and blobs, the result of layers. And the flow uh, you know, in your deep learning uh, procedures, you have the deploy file and model file, is just the deploy file is your layers and the model file is your weights uh, for your formula. And you build the, the data, uh, setting the max batch size. It's depending on your hardware for this. The IO layers, you, uh, you not only uh, get the, the output from uh, the final layer, you can get the output of any of them. And a same for, for the input. The input uh, you can put in where you can, you can use. Um, and deploy is uh, your final is your final build for this. Is what uh, you can learn. And for deep learning has. Uh, Benchmark for GP, uh, GPU versus CPU. I'm using the MINIST data set for this, for this task. I um, make 10,000 10, iterations. I display 100 iterations, each of them. I make a snapshot uh, each 5,000 iterations. And I put 10,000 of images. Uh, my normalization 28 per 28. I just you can just use the Docker for this running these these scripts. And in the same notebook, uh, I have uh, Intel Core i7 is the generation six. And so uh, the time for the 5,000 iteration is seven minutes. Uh, uh, excuse. Me. 
uh, 5,000 iterations is 7 minutes and 10,000 iterations is 50 minutes. But using the same notebook but the GPU, you can uh, has the same, the same response with uh, less than 3 minutes for the 10,000 iterations. And the GPU is five, uh, five times faster for these tasks with deep learning because the deep learning is uh, um, I don't know the word for this, sorry. <laughs> but uh, in the GTX uh, 1060, uh, you need only 10 seconds for the same tasks. And this software is important too. And the QDNN in 7.0, seven you, you can train and like uh, 600 uh, images per second uh, using a Tesla V100 and using a new software QDN, QDN uh, 7.3, uh, you can grow up to eight, eight, 800 uh, images per second. And for deep learning, you just, uh, uh, you cannot uh, uh, code from a scratch. Uh, you need to use a CUDA, parallelism, and a bunch of things for performance. So you can use uh, frameworks. Um, exist a lot of them. You can use CAF, CAF2, Chainer, MATLAB, Fino, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, and a lot of them. In, in my case, I use CAF. So the CAF is uh, deep learning from Berkeley University. Uh, they implement in C++. CPU and GPU model with only CUDA. You can use it, so AMD cards for OpenGL but uh, has a fork for this, but is not official. Uh, you have Python wrapper to put in your layer, command line tools for training and prediction, using Google Protobuf based model specification, several data formats, file system, level, level DB, LMDB, and HDF, HDF5. And the interfaces for CAFE is the command line, MATLAB, and Python. The API uh, of PyCAF, API of PyCAF has um, six, uh, six endpoints. Is the CAFNet is the most used interface for loading, configuring, and running models. Uh, I/O for handling uh, with input and output. And the blobs, the last one, uh, are exposed as NumPy arrays for ease of use. So, in the Python, how I can use the, the model, how I, can, how I can use the, the API, how I can train my model and predict of uh, my image. So, in Cafe Root, um, you can download the model and labels of ImageNet using these, um, these two scripts. And in the Python, you need to load the, the NumPy and CAF and define the, your, your model, your deploy model, and the weights of your model. The weights is of your formula, like in the first graph I showed and you load the model and the network. Uh, but before that, you need to set if you use a CPU uh, mod or GPU mod, uh, because they, they use the memory of GPU or CPU, depending on your model. Uh, for building transformer, you need to put a mean image they say like oh uh, like that uh, the mean is a garbage of your data set and they remove it and and the in the uh, before putting your your network uh, basically you make a transformer uh, this transformer what 
what uh, they do is just this. You have a red pixel, is this information. They have this shape, one, one tree. Uh, you made the, trans the transpose red pixel, so the array is like that. Uh, so you can access the, the colors by your first uh, index of the array. And you transpose the BGR from RGB for BGR uh, for your network. And in this case, I just load the, the, my image. I transform them before put it in my network and reshape it off my, my network. For one, it's just a one image I will put in this, uh, this network and perform the, the forward of the network. So the predict class in, of this image is uh, 2081. What's, what they mean? You need to load your, your, your labels data and find the, the index 281. In this case, they, they predicted for me it's a tab or tab cat. And you can bring the, the top five of them, or top uh, classes, just uh, uh, change this value, this, fat, and this, this value in this case. And the five predict is tab cat, tiger cat, Egyptian cat, red fox, or lynx. Or you can compare two images using distance maps, like uh, Hamming, Euclidean, or like that. Using two images, you load, you transform these two images, you reshape it, uh, your network for two images, and uh, normalize the, in this case, is uh, 200, uh, 227, and is a square image and your, you load uh, in network each image by your index. So uh, you perform uh, again the net forward. You get, grab the features. In this case, I use in the features, uh, features layer, my features components of my image, what the, the network learn about this image, and and bring the, the distance special uh, math just to do a Euclidean distance between these two images. If the distance uh, of image one, two closes to zero, most similar they are. And you can use uh, image segmentations uh, for this task, like uh, you have a one image and a bunch of objects in there you need to segment them. You have a lot of uh, algorithms, algorithms to do this task. And in my case, I use a selective source because uh, um, I don't have uh, converge objects be between of them. Uh, I just uh, import the OpenCV and use a selective search to, to generate segments. You can just uh, use one segment by the X and A axis and the weight and height uh, measure. And just crop your image, you can put this crop image in the, the network. The segmentation algorithms is uh, you can use in slide window, selective searches, super pixels, Bing, and edge, edge box, and more. Uh, for object location, you, you have uh, convolutional networks or deep learning net networks for do these tasks. Uh, you have a region-based, fast region-based, single shot, and region-based fully conventional networks. Or your simple using a uh, graphical interface using NVIDIA digits, digits. And you can process your data, configure uh, the, the software, 
uh, monitor uh, the your progress of your network in real time, visualize the the, the rails, the, the the layers, the final layers, and you can analyze the the, the output of each layer and read the, the 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 line of accuracy and the loss. And you can use the network pre-model uh, of Model Zoo and the op op optimization options. You can use the cloud solutions too, like Amazon, Google, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. And where I can learn more, Quick Labs from NVIDIA, uh, the link of uh, uh, official developer NVIDIA, uh, the link of the official CAF uh, and uh, I don't remember the name of this event but uh, they have a bunch of of information about deep learning thank you any questions <laughs>